Hey YouTube, uh, good evening, it's new 2 and one and I'm coming to you regarding a important matter. Uh, not hair, not gossip, uh, not celebrity opinion, none of that. It's actually really an important issue. Important to you, important to me, important to everybody. Um, okay, so right now, look, I swear, I am studying trust in states. But... Um, I came across this news article while it was dilly-dallying, and I thought it would make a quick video, well, it won't be quick, but a video for you guys regarding health care reform. Yeah, the House of Representatives passed the Health Care Reform Act on November 7th, 2009. The Senate is currently debating um, the, the health care reform bill. Um, the Senate is going to come up with their own version. The House has their version. Then they have to get together and merge it and um you know figure out a happy medium and then they send it to the president and then the president with his objectives that he laid out in his um press conference if you guys remember that when he um when he um addressed the house and the senate uh in that televised conference that we all got to see he laid out several uh factors that he would use in determining whether or not to pass or veto a health care reform bill if he passes the bill, then we have health care reform. Uh, and some of the issues included in the health care reform bill that have yet to be seen are universal health care. Universal health care is included in the House bill. It's unclear whether or not the Senate will pass a universal health care option for the poorest in the country. Um, okay, so another, uh, I guess, less talked about, but just as controversial, uh, factor in the health care reform bill is the Stupak or Stupak Pitts Amendment. Okay, and this amendment was written by Bart Stupak of Michigan, and he's a Democratic representative, and Joseph R. Pitts of Pennsylvania, who is a Republican representative. And it passed with pretty wide support in the House of Representatives, but it's controversial whether or not it will pass in the Senate. Um, what this amendment lays out it's basically, it prohibits the use of federal funds to pay for any abortion or to cover any part of the cost of any health plan that includes coverage of abortion, and except in cases of rape, incest, danger to the life of the mother. Health care reform is going to do several things. It will probably include a public option for the poorest people in the country. Those poorest people in the country will, res will receive health care completely through a single player payer plan, which is the public option, which is which means that the government will totally pay for everything um, that a person does when they receive health care. Or, or the person will pay a subsidized or smaller amount for health care and then the government will then turn around and um, pay the rest of the money to the health care provider so you have the health care provider right and you have the regular person and then you have the government right and both the government and the regular person put money into the health care provider the health care provider then provides coverage for the regular person Right, and that's for people that can afford to pay for part of their health care. And what the Stupak Pitts Amendment is saying that if you either receive funding from the government to help to pay for your health care, or the government pays completely for your health care, the government will not pay for your abortion. Therefore, you can't use that health care that you get subsidized from the government or free from the government to fund your abortion. A couple of background things that are really conflicting in this country. First, we have Roe v. Wade. Roe v. Wade was passed um, in 19... Actually, it wasn't passed. It was decided. It was a U.S. Supreme Court decision decided in 1973. This um, Supreme Court decision legalized abortion and basically made it a constitutional right for a woman to get an abortion. Therefore, the woman has the right to choose as part as a baby being a part of her body whether or not she wants to terminate a pregnancy. That's your constitutional right as a United States citizen. Okay, then in 1976, the House 
um, representative passed the Hyde Amendment, right? And that's an limitation on the right to have an abortion. You have the right to abortion, but the Health and Human Services Committee cannot pay for that right. Pac Pitt's amendment says is that now that we have universal health care for all, if that's what's going to happen, or if we have subsidized health care, no amount of funds used from that subsidized health care can be used to fund an abortion. Guys, I am really conflicted on this issue. And here is why. Here is why I'm really conflicted on this issue. First, I, politically speaking, you know, from a perspective of human rights, believe that every woman should have the right to have an abortion. That's my political view. Um, that is, uh, that's just, that's just my view politically. But personally, I would never have an abortion. Um, I've never been faced with a situation where I would need to have one. That's an overshare, but that's okay because we're talking about some serious stuff. And I would personally never do that. But I believe in a woman's right to choose. I don't think that the government has the right to tell you that you can't have an abortion. But I am really conflicted on whether or not the government should pay for your abortion. For, for a woman to have an abortion. When I say your, I'm not speaking to anyone in particular, okay? I'm just, you know, saying in general, for a, por a person's abortion. So even if they, the healthcare provider says, well, you know, we, prov we provide, you know, we do receive government funding, but we use her funds to pay for the abortion, the Stupak Pitts Amendment won't allow that because it recognizes that there's a commingling of funds and that more than likely some amount of funds from somewhere, somehow, even if it's just to operate the machinery, is coming from the government. So if that healthcare provider receives government funds and you receive government funds in order to fund your health care, you cannot get an abortion, you know? And then isn't that in a way, uh, you know, isn't that in a way taking away your right to choose, you know? And it, it is in a way. It's taking away your right to choose. In a way, if you are poor, you cannot have an abortion. And that's unconstitutional because if we all have a right to do something and um, if I have a right to do something and you have a right to do something, but the government says that you can't do something uh, because you're poor, that's a discriminatory effect uh, based on your financial status. You would have to then turn around and pay out of your own pocket money that you don't have to get an abortion. If there's no way for you to pay, then you have to have that baby. And that's violating your right to choose. And any type of government action like that will be overturned by the Supreme Court. So it, would, it, would, it doesn't have legs, Supreme Court-wise. But here's what I'm thinking. There are so many people in this country who are against abortion, like even like abortion rights, right? They are against it. Should they be forced to pay for that? Because that's what happens. Your taxpayer dollars go to pay for people, goes to pay, goes to pay for people's abortion. And would I still feel the same that everyone has the right to choose if I knew that, you know, that one third that FICA takes out of my, I mean FICA takes out of my check is gonna go for abortion? I don't think so. I don't think I'm going to feel the same way about that. You know, I think that I would be less sympathetic. Tell me what you guys think. You know, all opinions are welcome. But like I say, uh, no name calling, guys. Play nice. All opinions are welcome. Thanks so much for watching, YouTube. Have a good night. Um, I'm going to study until about one this morning, the next morning. So I'll be up. Thanks so much, guys.